If my wife figures out what I'm doing down here, I'm gonna get beat up, so wish me luck. Welcome back guys. Today we're doing something that I haven't done in a super long time and I've never done it this fancy before. We're gonna set up a massive brine shrimp hatchery, AKA sea monkey farm to feed a bunch of our fish. But first take a look at this beauty. So got the new light fixture all hooked up. I think that was the last video where we kind of discussed different parts of it. As you can see, a lot of brown algae popping up in this tank. This is one of those types of algae that I actually don't mind because it's pretty easy to get rid of. It could definitely be worse. And so we're crossing our fingers that this is just a phase. Like I think I pretty much know it is. Been down this road before. But let's get right into why you clicked on the video. I'm excited to use this kind of newer stuff. Maybe we can get a pretty cool system down. Let's go through the things that you need to do this and to do it the fancy way, okay? You kind of need a lot of stuff. And so I'm sure a lot of things that we talk about you could repurpose and I'll be sure to mention that. But we're gonna start off here with the main component, the vessel. This is this guy. So the Artemia Blender, it's a product that Corey sells. You can get it on Aquarium Co-op. It is like $45 though, but it's gonna come with pretty much everything you need. So of course, vessel itself, Comes with a little stand that you can use, although we're not gonna be using that. We'll talk about that later. It's got a lid, it comes with a little thermometer that you can put in there, make sure your temperature's correct. And it also comes with a little piece that you will feed your airline into to get bubbles down to the bottom. And then a little pipette. Oh, and then it also comes with a little thing for your airline tubing if you want to do that. And it also comes with its own little air stone. You will need a few other things though. You probably already have them. So we're gonna be using airline tubing. We also need to blow some air into this thing. So we need an air pump. You probably already have one. We're gonna be using the Aquarium Co-op battery operated one. You will most likely need a heater because we wanna keep this vessel at 80, 82 degrees. Who knows, maybe you keep your fish room at that temperature. In that case, you don't need this but I went out and got a, what is this, a 100 watt heater. This is gonna fit perfectly in here. It goes almost to the bottom. For reference, it is the high top. It was like 15 bucks. You of course need some brine shrimp eggs to get your sea monkeys to grow. So we're gonna be also using aquarium co-ops and you need some salt. So we're fortunate enough to have a couple of big five gallon buckets full of Fritz salt from a super long time ago. It's been outside, it's been getting rained on for forever. Uh, I'm hoping <laughs> that it's still dry. We'll find out in a little bit, but the last thing that you're gonna need, and these, these are two things that are totally optional because what we're gonna be doing is a little bit different. We're not going to be harvesting to feed primarily live brine shrimp, but rather we're going to be storing them up, freezing them, so we have a bunch of frozen food that we can feed over time. So for that, I found these super tiny like little ice cube trays that will hopefully not spill the sea monkeys everywhere. And then pretty much the last thing is a no drip turkey baster so that we can pipette that stuff into here quickly. And that has not arrived yet from Amazon. So hopefully we'll get that by the end of this video. Oh, and I almost forgot, this is actually the last thing. You need a light. So maybe you have something that would work. I went out and bought this thing on Amazon. It is a flexible LED light. That way we can pinpoint a light beam at the bottom to help collect the shrimp when we're done. So there's quite a few things that you probably don't need to go out and buy to do this. All said and done, I think I ended up paying like 120, maybe even $130 to get all of this stuff because I bought everything brand new. But if you don't have to do that, you might be able to get away with the setup for like 70 bucks. We're gonna do something super sketchy and place our little brine shrimp hatchery up above this tank. Cause I mean, I just think that's gonna look really cool. We're gonna be able to see the whole thing happen in real time when I'm bored at my desk and I look over across the room. And I think it's gonna be easier to dispense the brine shrimp out of this. We could place it like this on the edge of a table. I think that would work just fine, but this is sort of adding to the whole mystique and ambiance of this tank and this ridiculous scientific aquarium setup I have going on here. Let's just hope that it doesn't spill out or do anything. We have it secured on here. Again, I'm, I'm a crazy person and that's why I'm doing this. You don't have to do this. Got my bag of salt already. We took a little bit out of that big giant bucket. You don't have to buy a huge bucket, of course. So we'll have links for everything down in the description so you guys can follow along and do this if you want to. First things first, once your vessel's set up, you're gonna wanna fill it up with water. So we're just using regular straight tap water. We didn't dechlorinate it or anything like that. Having a little chlorine in the water actually helps to keep the bacteria down before the eggs hatch. And then of course, when your eggs hatch, that chlorine is pretty much out of solution. So it's kind of a positive thing to have. We filled this thing pretty much up to the top that's gonna make it about two liters and that's gonna dictate the rest of the things that we add in later. So once that's done, we then hook up our air stone, get some air in there, start bubbling this thing. 
not quite sure what a TBS is, but we ended up adding three and a half tablespoons for our two liter vessel. And that's gonna be kind of a happy medium of salt. If you look for this information on Google, you're gonna find a lot of different information, a lot of different people talking about different amounts, but I found this to be kind of right in the middle. After I got the salt in, I then wanted to double check the temperature. So I added some warm water. It turned out to be 76 degrees, but I wanna do the hatch a little bit warmer than that to try and speed it up. So we're gonna be adding that heater that we showed off. At this point, you're probably gonna look down at the bottom of the vessel and you're gonna see some salt sitting there. It'll eventually dissolve. You can keep going with the process though, it's no big deal. We whip out the Aquarium Co-op brine shrimp eggs, which are all vacuum sealed up and ready to go. So there's a big packet of eggs. These are gonna last me a super long time. They claim to have a 90% hatch rate. We'll see if that's true. I go ahead and check the temperature again to see if we've warmed up since the heater. And then we go ahead and add in a couple teaspoons of brine shrimp eggs. This is also an amount that Google suggests about one teaspoon per liter, and you're gonna see that kind of across the board. It's at this point you might wanna add in a little pinch of baking soda to adjust your pH. Luckily with the Fritz salt, it takes my soft water and puts it up to a good specific gravity that should be fine, but because the pH is just like right at eight, it might actually be a little bit under that. I go ahead and add a pinch to just make sure. You can of course test the water with even a test strip to make sure, and that's what I did. I just didn't show it on camera. If you have fairly hard water, then you should be fine and don't need to worry about this. We're gonna go ahead and double check the temperature before we go to bed, sitting at about 83 degrees, which should be fine. I feel comfortable with that. Future Mike here to talk a little bit more about temperature because it was something that I experienced when I did this a few more times. So if you don't wanna do the heater thing, you don't wanna mess around with trying to fine tune it, you're worried about it going over or whatever, uh, you don't have to. So if you can manage to keep it like the ambient room temperature around 70, or if you're even able to put the vessel into an aquarium that has a regulated temp, that is an option that you can do. If you keep the air temp at like, let's say 70, 72, you can do a hatch. It's just gonna take a little bit longer. It might take 36 hours. It might even take up to 48 hours, but you never wanna go past that point. When we did this for the first time, I woke up the next morning and the temperature was like 88 and then we brought it back down. We had some fluctuating temps throughout this whole process that ranged from between like 72 up to, like I said, 88. We still got a pretty good hatch out of it though. It took a little bit longer. You'll see kind of what happens and what our conclusions are with this one. But I just wanna say like the temperature thing can be a little wonky but it, it's not a huge deal. There's a lot of room for error within this whole process and don't let it discourage you because it's still really fun. One thing I will say is that if we didn't have this infrared thermometer, we would have had a very bad time. So this thing, I mean, it's awesome. You can check your tanks with it. It makes the brine shrimp hatchery temp checking super easy, highly recommend it. So whatever you do before you go to bed, just triple quadruple check your heater and make sure you've spent enough time really dialing it in to get it to that temp that you want it to be at. Again, 82 is kind of perfect, but it's not required. Well, there it is, the sea monkey tower of doom. Hopefully this thing doesn't get bumped in the night and falls over and spills everywhere or else I will cease to exist. But hopefully we come back in 24 hours, maybe uh, shouldn't be much longer than that and we have just this thing teeming with life and we get to harvest and start feeding our fish and then freezing a bunch of it. All right, so back at our vessel, it has been approximately 24 hours and it looks like we've had a pretty good hatch. Look at all of those sea monkeys, man. Millions of them. We got our little spotlight down here, concentrating as many as we can down into this base so that way when we go to drain them out, we're getting as much of them as possible. But as you can see, I mean, they're gonna be floating all the way through this thing. So it's gonna take a while to extract out as many of them as we can. We got a decent layer of hatched and unhatched eggs up here at the top. There is gonna be a little bit floating in suspension as well. That's just kind of an inevitability of the whole thing, but that's okay. We could wait a few more hours or even go throughout another night. It's the evening right now, so we could wait until until tomorrow morning, but I don't wanna risk a collapse of this. I think this is pretty good, at least for um, my first time doing this in several, several years. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start harvesting. Turns out this was a little bit of a premature harvest, but we still wanted to continue to get our feet wet with the rest of the process and so we could feed our fish some of these live baby brine shrimp. So we just poured some out into a little container here, took our pipette that came with the kit in, and then started feeding our fish. You can pour this directly into a tank. The amount of salt that's in this going into our big aquarium isn't gonna impact it in any way. Don't forget that we often add salt as a medication for fish in a lot higher amounts, so this is really no big deal. Bigger fish that you might have, like rainbow fish, are pretty much gonna ignore this stuff, but all of my smaller aquarium fish are really into it. One of the main reasons why we did this in the first place was because we wanted to feed some live and frozen baby brine shrimp to some fry that we have that's part of a feeding experiment for legit fish food. 
More on that hopefully soon, but now we bust out the no drip turkey baster and we start pouring into our little ice cube trays. Upon further, further inspection, we need to have a higher concentration of brine shrimp in here to make this work. So we're just gonna try this one as like a starting point reference for us. We're gonna save these two. We're gonna let this thing run overnight for the final 12 hours to see if 36 can get more of a hatch and thus more in our cubes. So we come out the next morning, turn the air off, and then inspect what we have in our vessel, and it appears right off the bat that there is way more brine shrimp in this thing now than there was at the 24 hour mark. So I think this ended up being around 32, maybe 34 hours. I mean, I don't know exactly. This whole thing doesn't have to be super, super precise. So we're just, we're around 36 hours and this appeared to be a lot better for us. I think because we had those fluctuations in temperature, but regardless, it was time to harvest. So we started pouring it out slowly to get that container full up with as much brine shrimp as possible so that we could really take advantage of filling up the cube. So go back to the turkey baster, start filling up. We can already see that there's a lot more baby brine shrimp in these cubes and that was gonna be perfect. We did freeze the tray from the 24 hour mark as a reference point, but even just looking at this from the top before we freeze it, we can tell there's way more. Going over to the blue container, which was filled up next, you can see that there's definitely a lot less and a lot of the cells in the red one, you can tell there's not a ton of shrimp in them. So we'll have to just wait until after we freeze them to really see how many shrimp come off of these. It'll be interesting to see. While those are freezing, let's take a look at that 24 hour tray. So if we pop out a cube and inspect it, we see that there's only a tiny little layer down at the bottom. So it's basically a frozen seawater cube. But here's the thing, is that this amount of shrimp is actually perfect for putting into an aquarium with just a few fish. So imagine if this was a whole cube, there would be way too much food that would go in. A lot of it would get uneaten and then eventually turn into waste. So there isn't actually a huge problem with there being only a little bit of shrimp in there. It just depends on how many fish you have and what your circumstances are. How many tanks do you have? Do you need that much shrimp? That's gonna be up to you. Regardless, when we were done with this portion, it was time to really clean everything out. So that's gonna be an important step because this is going to stink like really bad if you just leave it, okay? So we take that into the utility sink. We use a lot of hot water. I actually didn't use any um, specific cleaners or bleach or anything. I think I probably should have, but regardless, we flushed everything down the drain and then I left the water on for an extended period of time after doing this just to make sure everything's not sitting in there and gonna stink up my garage. I saved some of the live stuff to feed the fish out in the legit fish food headquarters, so the rummy nose and the cur eyes, they really appreciated that. They're kind of borderline too big to eat this stuff, but they munched down on it. Our rainbow fish was kind of interested in the big bites that he could get, but other than that, he got disinterested pretty quick. It was not his normal thing. So that's one thing about the baby brine shrimp, you know, it's really meant for the smaller aquarium fish and primarily like fry and little tiny baby fish that are developing. So it's perfect for our guppies here and some of the progeny that we have in our main tank that's in the living room. Feeding these live baby brine shrimp are great for a few different reasons. One, I mean, it's a non-processed food. So giving your fish a break from all of the junk that they're used to eating and getting something that's actually alive is also really engaging for the fish. It's like what they're supposed to do in the wild, you know what I mean? And then of course, it's a really good source of protein, fat, carbs, and everything else that your fish needs. So on average, you're looking at about 55% protein, 21% fat, which is pretty much double. Okay, these are good fats as well that our fish need, especially young developing fish and fry. And it's got a good source of carbs too. It's all really healthy for your fish. Anyway, back to our project here. Let's check out our trays after they've had a chance to freeze. So first off, inspecting the cubes in the higher yield batch, we see a lot more shrimp in these cubes, man. I mean, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. And based off what we saw with the 24 hour yield in the cube and that being enough, this is definitely gonna be enough, borderline on too much. So we're gonna go ahead and throw that into the guppies, see how they like it. And the same effect happens. We're getting the slow drip of the shrimp into the tank. It's pretty fun to watch and I can tell that they're enjoying it. So that's how I was able to make like 17 million sea monkeys at home to feed my fish, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. I, you know, this video could have been a lot shorter, but I really wanted to dive into more of the specifics on things because I know there's gonna be a ton of questions about this. I had a lot of questions for myself during the whole process. It was fun to do this. It's been a super long time and it really did kind of like 
reinvigorate my interests in certain aspects of the hobby that I, I haven't been in touch with in a long time. This would also be a really fun thing to do with your kids, to teach them about life cycles and things like that. So overall, I mean, it's super healthy for your fish. It's a great food source if you have tiny fish or you're doing some breeding projects. It's, it's kind of a no-brainer. You gotta try it if you haven't already. Please let me know if you like this video. Leave me a comment, tell me what you think about it because I would love to do some more videos on this stuff. It, I actually did a few more hatches since the main footage that you saw in this video and I was able to get my cubes up to like two-thirds full, almost a full cube. And I think I have an idea for how to make our cubes basically like 99% brine shrimp. So if if you're into it, let me know and I'll go ahead and buy the thing that I need to do it. I think I'm probably gonna do it anyway, but anyway, I, I would just really appreciate your feedback on this whole thing. Links for all the stuff that you need to make your own sea monkeys, AKA brine shrimp at home will be down in the description, of course. And then there will also be a QR code here again. I'm trying this out to see if it helps people. I don't know, if you're watching on a TV, it might be the perfect thing for you. But yeah guys, stay tuned because this video should be out soon. I don't know, maybe next week? We'll see. I think I got it pretty much done, but we did get this tank all figured out. The footage that you saw at the beginning of the video was super long time ago. I'm rambling on. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this thing up. Thank you once again for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.